Bizarre Brain Comics. Gary here for Bizarre, <coughs> Bizarre, <coughs> way, for Bizarre Brain Comics. This is where I like to take a look at uh, some older comics and examine the characters and the creators and then uh, take a look at the stories and the art. Okay. What I want to look at today comes from Skywald Comics. You may have never heard of it. I'm very un unfamiliar with them. This is the only, to my knowledge, this is the only issue I've ever had from uh, of any books from Skywald. And this is from 1971. Skywald's Jungle Adventures featuring Zangar. This is a double-sized issue, the square binding, 1971, Jungle Adventures, ooh, okay, Skywald Publications, <clears throat> it was an American publisher of comics and magazines, Primarily of black and white horror magazines such as Nightmare, Psycho, and Scream. It's very similar to the uh, the Warren horror comics uh, magazines uh, from the late 60s and through the 70s. Stuff like Creepy and Eerie and Vampirella. They even published a line of, of comic books. Uh, um, this is one of them. I don't know how many titles, how much, com uh, how, how many, uh, and how many issues they ever published, but, uh, they published from 1970 to 75. And this is Jungle Adventures number three, featuring Zangar. Here, this is with the story and art. There's no credits. I had, I had to find this out in my research. Uh, story and art by Jack Katz, who was born in 1927. As far as I can tell, he's still around, so he's getting kind of long in the tooth. <clears throat> he's who is a, an American comic artist, writer, and painter. He's known for his graphic novel, The First Kingdom. So I've, I've never read that, but I have I have uh, seen it several times. And he. Uh, he drew artistic inspiration from such artists as Hal Foster and Alex Raymond. Back then, everybody did. And he attended the School of Industrial Art in New York City and began working in comics in the 40s. <clears throat> Although working in that field through the 50s, he left the field for many years because of his slow pace of work and his highly detailed work. In 1969, he returned uh, to working on mainstream comics and then started his epic, The First Kingdom. And then after, after moving to California, he started that. Again, this work uh, was completed in 1976, and it's a precursor, a precursor of uh, the graphic novel medium. Because it wasn't literally a graphic novel. It was in a series of, I think it was 24 issues. To tell one overall story and arc. So now it would be known as a graphic album. And then after the First Kingdom, he focused on teaching at a community college in Albany, California. And has continued producing graphic novels. Even I guess his most recent one was, what, uh, 2018, I think they said? That's what it was. And uh, from what I understand, the, uh, these later graphic novels are uh, 
more or less sequels to the Lost Kingdom. And I know nothing about the Lost Kingdom, but I, I always like the uh, um, the cover illustrations. So, okay. Here we are, and here we go. Take a trip into Jungle Adventures with v Vanguard by Skywald Comics. Okay, here you can see that full cover illustration. By Jack Katz. And I, from what I understand, the inking on the cover was by, uh, hell, I've forgotten his first name, Giacoa, who's done a lot of inking for both Marvel and DC. And I said, there you go, Skywald Comics. From what I understand, the name Skywald comes from a combination of the, of the names of, uh, of the founders of the publishing company, uh, Saul Brodsky, is the S-K-Y from Sky, uh, who uh, worked with Stan Lee for many years at Marvel. And I've forgotten the name of the other fellow. It has Walden, his last name, like Walden or something like that. I've forgotten. I've forgotten now. It was a name that I, w I was unfamiliar with. And to tell you right off the bat that the, uh, the writing... I mean, it's a it's a fun, good story, but the writing is kind of stilted, especially the dialogue, kind of stilted, uh, um, overblown, almost medieval. And what I tell you, when I first, I found this many years ago, and it was the, the first Skywald book I'd ever ever seen. And uh, I may, I may have seen uh, some of the black and white. Uh, horror magazines over the years, but I, I've never picked any of them up. Um, but this is the re only uh, regular comic that I can remember, anyway, f uh, from Scott that I've got from Skywald or seen from Skywald. And uh, of course, you know, if uh, if you've followed my channel here, then you you know I'm a big Tarzan fan, so I like all kinds of Tarzan-like stuff. Um, Jungle Adventures and the like. And uh, when I first saw this, um, I, this really reminded me, both here and some of the interior, really reminded me of um, early Barry Smith, Barry Windsor Smith art. And uh, that just might be from largely from the uh, from the inking. I don't know. Uh, but then when I pulled it out again to, to reread it for this, I realized that's not Barry Smith. And of course, there's no credit, so I had to had to go looking for the for it. And uh, Jack Katz is, from what I understand, both the writer and and artist. And uh, to my knowledge, I've I've only seen any reference to these to three issues, so this title may have only lasted for three issues. And therefore, I presume that Jack Katz was the creator, or at least one of the creators of the character, and. Of course, if you know, uh, uh, familiar with Tarzan, um, you take a look at the at the name here, and it's obviously just uh, the name Tarzan, with the syllables reversed, and then the T changed to a G, so you get Zangar. And I ha don't know his origin, how he got in into the jungle, and. Like uh, Tarzan, this he seems to be delving into uh, lost civilizations and the like, like tar like uh, many Tarzan stories. Or, but this is is a nice a nice cover. I like the like the cover, the 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 uh, implied power in the stance of this figure here, and the uh, suppose and the enmity with this this character here. It's, you are a fool, Alandon, to think 
that these bonds can hold Zangar for long. Let us not wait, O leader. I say, do away with this jungle animal now. Be quiet, Kolrak. Zangar dies when I give the order, but first we will see him suffer. And this figure here really made me think of, uh, and some others in there, uh, Wally Wood art. And there are other, other I see simil similarities. And it may just be, since he is older, it may just be, uh, it may just happen to, to be similarities. Let's take a look inside. Oh, here we go. Really nice first page, starting with a splash, pa uh, splash panel. And then, but unlike so many stories with splash panels, uh, whereas um, often the splash panel is a teaser for uh, for what is in the story, and this doesn't tease. This starts it, and I gather from the way it begins that, um, and I say I gather from the way it begins that this is um, is a continuation of a story from the uh, from the previous issue. I don't know that for sure, or at least a chapter. Here we see this this lovely lady. She was uh, says she is a, a princess, but she has stolen something from uh, from uh, her tribe. From the way she's dressed, I I presume they're they're a, um, not a savage tribe, but a more more civilized. And I use all that in quotes. Civilized tribe. Somewhere in Africa, even the time period is is unclear. And she's running, and uh, because said she's stolen, I think uh, a gem was it? I, I can't remember. And she's uh, to escape because Zangar is on her tail, her trail, <clears throat> to capture her. Meanwhile, she's being here. She's being pursued by a lion. She's a really lovely lady. This this lady figure reminds me both of uh, Wally Wood and um, oh, what's his name? Gray Morrow. Oh, I had a senior moment. Gray Morrow. And there she's running, and the the lion is loping to catch her, and she she uh, uh, collapses, and she just happens to collapse onto a. Uh, a log in the river, which takes her beyond the reach of the big cat. And she is un as she's unconscious, uh, the current takes her into the uh, the bog of of eternal darkness. And we see in the water this some kind of horrid creature rearing its head up, but doesn't molest her. And it takes on onto the plains of Calaire. And this this evil looking figure here on this spire in this castle, he's some kind of uh, magician, I presume. With his little homunculus familiar sitting on his shoulder, and another one <laughs> imitating all his gestures right next to him. And he, he sees the, uh, the woman from afar and sends his minions, who are these magnificently drawn, drawn winged figures, to come down and snatch her up and, and re bring her back. He says, uh, release her, Sky Guards. Welcome to Kalar, beautiful wayfarer. Stay a while and tell me why you come whence. Should be hence, I think. My name is Nacor. Then we change to uh, Zangar, who is following her trail, and here the again this figure here reminds me a lot of Wally Wood, and his his red mane is just always being whipped around, even when he's at rest. <laughs> kind of conveys the the feeling of constant action. Very, very nicely drawn. You can see just in the in the grasses there, as well as in in these these images over here, the meticulous detail. So I presume it took him a, a while to, to draw all this. He fo he f uh, follows her trail to the river, uh, gets another log and a pole, and tries to make his way 
after her. And here that cr creature we saw earlier, this is a, a really cool looking monster of some kind, which attacks his, his little raft. It's very beautifully rendered. And very nice, nice and dramatic image. Ooh. And he plunges down into the water with the beast, the horrid creature after him. As the, 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 the coloring helps convey the uh, the underwaterness of it. He takes out his knife, and he, while he while he can't penetrate the ar armored scales, he apparently uh, um, inflicts some pain um, from a nerve center or something like that. It releases him, and he makes his way to shore, where he's immediately set upon by these by these warriors who lasso him, take him before their ruler. Al, what did it say? His name was Al, Al Inden. And they take him to him. They think he's a spy of Nacor's, that, that villainous person here that we saw before. And again, this figure here also reminds me of Wally Wood. That one right there. Um, just just kind of vaguely. Huh? And so if they think he's a spy and they set him to... Uh, to be judged in the arena and they sent these these monsters who are also minions of of the villainous and Nacor and he he dispatches all of them and this is a, a good shot here in the in the arena after he's just dis dispatched them all and he said you've proven yourself uh, join us we're about about to engage in battle with the villainous Nacor here we are back to Nacor and the, the young lady because he, he Nacor is uh, their enemy and has persecuted these people in some way so they uh, offer him weapons and they go oh, no, this is a really nice nice panel right here and it's probably a precursor to the first kingdom but it also kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Roy Crinkle uh, uh a painting he did a, of a scene from uh, for a, a cover for a King Cole edition, and it really reminds me of that. Here, you see this right up here with the horns. There's the the villain and his sky guards, and here's the the besieging army, and the two two opposing armies meet in battle, and very hot because of the, the red coloring and the uh, and the yellow coloring makes it very hot and very action filled and, and, and meticulous detail these you know, horses rearing very nicely done it's a nice anatomy really nice panel to panel storytelling and see Zangar is very very powerful and just the way he just tosses that chariot filled with with uh, warriors around and he's just hacking his way through the opposing army until he he is also also laid low by a, by a blow, and he is one of the last ones uh, conscious on the battlefield. And now he's he's uh, the Nacor is observing all of this through his Omni Stone. Now, by the power of my Omni Stone, I can ensure my power for a thousand years with you ruling at my side, Telana. That was the princess's name, Telana. This is both reminiscent of Tarzan and something from Conan the Barbarian. But Zangar uh, is awake. He sees that Al Alan Dunn is injured but unconscious. He takes him and he starts to climb up the precipice. Then, his, uh, what's his name? Nador's Na um, magic uh, concoxus this. this um, Horde creature as a guardian. And while he's uh, valiantly fighting, it seems to be to no avail. But the girl, she breaks free, grabs the, grabs the gem and smashes it on the stone floor. And all of the, the magical creatures at uh, the sorcerer's beck and call then disintegrate. 
And Zengar arrives just in there and he backs uh, Nador up right to the to the fire pit. And he, to get away, he plunge, accidentally plunges into the pit itself. And here we see them. Nador comforting the girl who he who he has pursued, because she's willing to go back with him peacefully <laughs> to, to face the judgment for what for whatever it was that she had done. And she's just glad to be free of the power of Nador. And that is the end. So it's not a very long story. As I said, I really like, like the art. Now, the rest of the book is filled up with uh, reprints of older jungle stories and characters. Some really nice, and this is from the 50s. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this is pre-code. And uh, some nice artwork, especially for the time. And and these, a lot of the artists who worked on this stuff back then were known as good girl artists because they, they had a lot of uh, scantily clad women and they were done done very well. Now this and here is Jojo Congo King. And I really like his artwork. And I think this is uh, I think this is Matt Baker, who's also known for being a good girl artist. He did some really nice stuff here. Some nice fluid line work. Good good action, and of course, always the lovely lovely ladies. Very very heroic. more Jojo and a text page two, two page text text story another Jojo Congo King the Forsaken City more lovely scantily clad ladies I don't I'm not sure if this is still the same artist or not I don't think it is it's somewhat similar maybe I'm not sure it's not doesn't seem quite as nice as in the previous story not quite as fluid it's a nice page layout, interesting layout. That's a real interesting layout. And some, some good panel to panel storytelling. And that's it. And that's all for Zangar. And Jojo the Congo King. And it's not unlike Marvel's uh, Jungle Action at this uh, being published about the same time, um, which was primarily, I mean, that. Uh, Initially, primarily um, reprint jungle stories like this, with the, except they had like uh, um, Tharn, who was just like this, except there were, there were more jungle stories, not so much uh, lost civilizations, and um, like uh, Jan of the Jungle. That's the female Jan, not the male Jan. There was there was both, uh, one in comics, one in, in pulp magazines, and um, then the jungle action later. I think was a, a vehicle for uh, Shanna the She Devil, as a tryout, and then she got her own title, if I rem remember correctly, and then uh, Jungle Action went to the uh, to the Black Panther from the Avengers. So that's all I got for this. Hope you enjoyed it. Some really nice artwork. It's a and if you've never seen it before. It's a good introduction because this is all I've seen of it, and and I I like it. I like it because I really like a, a, even these hokey old, old fashioned jungle stories. They're they're a lot of fun. So please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, share it with your other jungle friends, <laughs> and remember, comics are art.